Hey, Craig here. So I recently got this 36 inch 16 gauge slip roll uh, made by uh, Dayton. I actually got it from uh, Zorro Tools. Uh, but there's one problem, uh, one modification I need to make to it and I'm gonna machine a part for it. So for those of you who aren't familiar with that, what a slip roll is, it's basically a machine for making curves in uh, material, usually flat material. You have a piece of uh, flat steel like this and you wanna curve it like this. Uh, basically you just put it in here like this, pull on the handle, and you pull it through like that, and it bends the metal. You, uh, you increase the curvature by the, uh, the settings in the back. There's uh, two knobs back here that you can use to adjust the height of the rear roller back here that uh, increases the, the curve in it. So, since I'm dealing with such small parts and I have to worry about uh, the flat, when you first put it in, there's a distance between the pinching rollers and the back roller. So when you put it in, the first bend is going to leave a flat. So I actually have to flip it back and forth as I'm rolling it. And I actually have to do incremental bends. So I will bend it to a certain radius, increase the radius, run it back through uh, both sides to, uh, to eliminate the flats and to get the, uh, the proper diameter. And I actually use... Um, uh, diameter gauge, it's uh, sizes of uh, uh, pieces of steel that I cut out to a certain diameter and I basically just bend it until I get the, uh, the proper curvature. So now the modification I'm going to be making to this is basically I'm going to be removing this regular handle here and I'm going to be putting this ratchet handle here. In the past, on my uh, smaller slip roll, actually the reason I got this is because my smaller slip roll uh, broke. It was basically too small for what I was trying to do. Uh, not heavy duty enough. So, um, basically, the, the problem that I'm having is when I put the, the stock in here, and it's basically on the release. When this comes out, it let's go and it's just it's just hard on my elbow I had some problems with my elbow with the other machine and as soon as I went to a ratchet you can actually with the ratchet you can actually adjust where the release is or where the the material comes out of the slip roll because there's kind of a a jolt you know once it pops through and uh, the, the ratchet basically helps you control at which point it releases and, and it's just easier on my elbow. So basically what I'm going to do is pull this off. I'm going to machine a coupling out of this uh, one and a half inch uh, steel. Uh, hopefully regular steel, mild steel will be good enough. But basically I'm going to cut a two inch piece here. I'm going to machine, um, you know, the, the proper size. This is a three quarter inch. So I'm going to go uh, 0.8 on this with some set screws. Um, and that'll be basically be a coupling between to join these two together like that. I've got the uh, material mounted in the vise. I'm just going to um, manually uh, face the two uh, rough ends that were saw cut. Okay, now that I have it all faced off uh, in two sides, I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, the CAD and the cam on it. Uh, 
that, now I'm going to go ahead and set my uh, zeros on the stock here. I actually set my zeros on the front corner over here because it's uh, faster to probe and it's actually not a real critical part so okay I'm gonna do this whole thing with a 3 16 four flute end mill uh, so the the feeds and speeds are be, gonna be pretty conservative so I'll just uh, check back uh, every once in a while on, on the progress All right. Okay, well that worked out pretty good. Let me pop that out. I didn't leave any stock. I suppose I could have left uh, a few thousandths on there and made a finished pass on there, but anyways. All right, let me uh, see if this fits on here. Looks like it fits in pretty good. It could have been a little deeper, but I didn't want to go too deep on that uh, 3 16 end mill, so that should work good. Right. Well, I had it right on this, right against, along this edge right here. So all I need to do is uh, flip it over, and it's the exact same height. and then just run the same code again. All right, the other side is all machined out. Now I'm just going to lay this part on its side. And the vise there. Let's stick out a little to set my zeros. Right, I'll go ahead and set my zeros and then uh, load up the code to drill and tap the holes for the set screws. Okay, I've got the code loaded. I've got my zeros set on here. I've uh, lowered the uh, belt position to uh, change the belt position to low and ready to drill the holes. tension compression tapping head for the uh, quarter 20 tap I'll just give it a little 
Deeper wallets in here. I just need to put a couple of set screws on here and try it out. Obviously if I had some round stock this would probably look nicer and all, but it's just easier to do it this way. So. Really, well I didn't have any regular set screws so I just put a couple of socket head, uh, socket cap screws on here for now. So I'll just uh, slide this on here, tighten that up. Ratchet on. All right, here we go. So a quick demonstration on uh, how to work this thing. Usually there's two knobs in the front, and those two knobs control the height of the bottom roller. So what you need to do is back off the bottom roller on this side or both sides until the material passes through and then keep turning this knob until it stops. It's actually picking this roller up. Now there's like a, I don't know, like an eighth inch play, sixteenth eighth, eighth inch play before this catch engages. So actually the weight of this thing is going to be holding this in place so and then over on this side I usually use like a paid uh, like a gauge pin or a gauge block over here to make sure that um, uh, this size this side is the same as this as far as the, the gap so all right, all right. Um, the next thing is to adjust the the rear actually I've got the rear all the way down so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here and right now it's just kind of passing over the top of it it's not actually bending it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep increasing it in half turns Until I start getting some curve into it. I'm still kind of getting used to this one. Now I'm far, now I'm far from an expert on this. I, all I do is make um, uh, electrical covers like this out of I don't do like um, anything fancy on this so but I'll just show you what I know about it. Like I said, I usually flip it back to get rid of the flat spot. Of course, if anybody out there watching this knows more about slip rolls and can see what I'm doing, see what I'm doing wrong, let me know. You can see it's starting to get a, a little bit of a curve to it. Eventually I'd like to uh, convert this to a CNC, not like a mill would be, but I'd like to automate 
these two back screws here that I can control with an Arduino or something and possibly put uh, yeah put a couple of stepper motors on those and possibly even a stepper motor on this so I can just push buttons rather than doing this normally you'd be doing something really long and making some kind of tube or something and you would just set the depth and you just roll it through once and you would make that make it that diameter but since this is so small unless somebody else knows a a better way of doing it but you're gonna kind of get the point how that works All right, well if you like this video I'd appreciate the thumbs up if you'd like to subscribe there should be a subscribe button over here uh, should be some links to some videos down below that you might like to watch um, also if you'd like to support us on patreon there should be a patreon link over here and uh, as always, thanks for watching.